So welcome everybody. It's the PHA pleasure to invite you to this fascinating evening. And thank you and welcome Rabito Chatwin, who is going to be talking to us by, about an incredibly fascinating topic. He's a traveling hypnotherapist and he's going to talk to us about freedom hypnosis and fabulously is going to explain to us what hypnosis actually is. So thank you very much. And over to you, Rubito. OK, I am going to uh, do a presentation first, if that's OK. And then at the end, when I finish the presentation, uh, then if you've got any questions, I welcome your questions. Obviously, while I'm doing the presentation, if there's anything that comes to your mind while I'm doing it, you can just uh, put it in the chat and then um, and then we can we can look at that at the end. Uh, and then anybody that's interested at the end, once I've explained hypnosis, what it is, what it isn't, the limitations, the benefits, I'm going to touch on mass formation, I'm going to touch on COVID vaccine and COVID symptoms, and some other stuff as well. Um, once I've finished, if people would like to have a go, we'll do a, a, a kind of a demo, a demo at the end, maybe for about 20 minutes to kind of show you what it is. Um, for those that feel uncomfortable with that, no problem. You can just uh, uh, stay here and ask questions at the end. Okay, so I will share my screen. First of all, I believe strongly that hypnosis is the most overlooked healing modality. Most people have heard of Reiki, uh, homeopathy, uh, meditation, but um, I think it's not only the most overlooked, I would argue that it's also one of the most misunderstood as well. So freedom his hypnosis is the name I've given to the type of hypnosis that I do. I'm going to explain actually what hypnosis is, then I'm going to explain hypnotherapy, and then I'll finish with a bit more specific on what I do um, at the end. Okay, so there we go. All right. And I am an online and in-person hypnotherapist, so you can do sessions with me remotely. I'm also a UK tutor of critical thinking. Um, I do that uh, only over the summer. I do summer courses now. I'm a full-time meditator, which I'll, I can maybe explain as I'm doing the slides. And I'm also the founder of the Conscious People's Network on Telegram. Um, there, robito.info will take you to everything that I do. And so now diving into what is hypnosis. So first of all, nearly all ancient cultures, that's including the Sumerian, the Persian, Chinese, Indian, Egyptian, Greek, and Roman, had shamans, priests, or practitioners employing the hypnotic state, which is also called hypnagogia, for healing. So it's not new. Franz Anton Mesmer was a German physician whose technique, and this was obviously a long time ago, popularized the idea of the magical powers, which is what we often see when we look on the television and we see hypnosis and we think that there's something magical going on. And there isn't something, well, there is something magical going on, but it's not magical powers. But nevertheless, I was mesmerized by the television, right? It's, uh, it's obviously gone deep-rooted into our psyche, this idea of being mesmerized and that hypnosis is something magical. However, on a more kind of practical level, there was James Esdale, who was, uh, became very kind of, he was very notable, kind of famous, uh, because um, he was actually one of the first people to be using hypnosis as a surgical procedure so that people don't feel pain. And that was on the battlefields of India. And that was out of sheer necessity because there was no painkillers at the time. And then when they were introduced, um, they, they couldn't get them to the people on the battlefield. So there were enough people using hypnosis um, by 1892 that the British Medical Association endorsed the therapeutic use of hypnosis for doctors, surgeons, psychiatrists, psychologists, etc. So what I'm basically kind of explaining right now is that this is not new. This has been going on for a long time. The US psych uh, psychiatrist Milton Erickson 
founded the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis in 1957. The UK National Occupational Standards for Hypnotherapy were published in 2002. And now we have a 2016 Stanford study, which shows that hypnosis causes physical changes in the brain that enhance somatic and emotional control. Somatic means from the body. So the ability for the body to control itself, to change how the body regulates and moves and, change, uh, and, and behaves, and also emotions as well. So we'll dive into that a little bit. This is the study from 2016. Okay, so a lot of people feel that hypnosis is, uh, or some people you know, would, would argue that it's controlling people, that it's some form of control. So when we talk about is hypnosis suggestibility, well, the issue with there's two things about suggestibility. In the studies, uh, when they talk about suggestibility, they actually mean the ability for you to go into hypnosis when they say, are you suggestible? So some of you might know mass formation. Dr. Mateus Desmet says that about 30% uh, percent of the population are hypnotizable. I disagree with that completely. I'll explain why although I don't disagree with uh, what Dr. Uh, Mateus Desmet says about uh, other things. But um, suggestibility in the studies means going into hypnosis. Uh, we understand it generally as being suggestible, as being controlled, okay? So is it, is hypnosis that? No, but it does play a part in it. Is hypnosis deep focus? When we focus on something, we're in a trance state. If anybody out there thinks that you've never been in a trance state, have a quick look at this photograph of somebody watching a computer screen. We've all been in a trance state. It's a state of focus, um, uh, of deep focus is the trance state. So is hypnosis an altered state of awareness when your consciousness or your awareness changes? And the answer to that is, Yes, but also we're constantly going in and out of different awareness, different states of awareness. So when we want to explain hypnosis, we need to talk about brainwave activity. And I will touch on, well, I'll actually go deep into the, the, the focus and the suggestibility as well. But to understand hypnosis, we need to look at brainwave activity. MAPS. The Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, they did a study in 2001, which looked at ayahuasca, which is DMT, and other activities on the human brain. And what they found was that the changes in consciousness induced by ayahuasca, DMT, are comparable to a meditative state, meditation, hypnotic, hypnagogic states, and that's all character, characterized by an increased theta activity. All right, so an increased theta activity is what we're exploring. And just in case you think that that study, if anyone out there is thinking that this study is, you know, who's MAPS, psychedelic studies, that sounds crazy. Actually, the Imperial College, Imperial College London um, has now got a center for psychedelic research for depression and uh the uh, University College of London is jumping in there now to study on uh, DMT as well. So what they found is that if we look at the brainwave states, beta, that's the thinking mind. That's where we are most of the time. We're actively thinking. Our brain waves are active. We're thinking, thinking, thinking. And so our brain is very active. As we focus on the present moment, the brain waves slow down and we go into alpha. After alpha, there's theta, which is an even slower brainwave state, and then delta is sleep. All right, so we all know what it's like to go in sleep, and we know also that when we go to sleep, we dream, so we know that we're very connected to our subconscious. Okay, so the first part then is from beta down to alpha. The more, that, the more connected we get to our subconscious, the more that we go down these brainwave states. So from beta to alpha, theta to delta, delta is sleep. Um, to go into alpha, we need to focus on the present moment. So focusing on the present moment and then theta, 
is the hypnagogic state. I'll explain how we get from alpha to theta in a moment, but first from beta to alpha. So from the thinking mind to the present moment, to meditation. And to do that, that's where the focus comes in. Um, I'll mention this in a moment. So for us to uh, go into the uh, alpha state, which is you know meditation, um, reading, reading is meditation. It brings you into the present moment. You can't read and not be in the present moment because you have to read the page again. Music, you can't play a musical instrument unless you are in the present moment. So playing music is a form of meditation. I'm just showing people here that, um, that the meditation is something that we do all the time. Focusing on the present moment is something that we do all the time. You need to do that when you're focused on a sport. And also just notice that all of these activities, you're doing something. So to go into the alpha, you focus on the present moment but you're doing something, you're playing an instrument, an instrument, you're doing a sport, you're painting a picture, you're swimming, it's a good one because you need to focus on your breath and you also need to focus on the movement. Obviously meditation, but in meditation you're doing something, you're focusing on the breath, you're focusing on your sensations and also prayer because there's some people out there um, that um, say that you know that this that uh meditation kind of goes against uh say religions christianity for example well when you pray you also if you're praying deeply you're going into the present moment and so it's just focusing on the present moment is a type of meditation all right so now this part so there's a part of the brain that lights up called the default mode network this is what it looks like in a brain scan when we're thinking about the future or going back into the past, because of negativity bias, when we go into the future, we're usually worrying about the future. When we go into the past, we're regretting what we've done. And, you know, this has been talked about in spirituality for thousands of years. And now the science can explain that there's a part of the brain that lights up when we go into the future or the past, the default mode network. When we, oh, sorry, when we focus on the present moment, when we go from beta to alpha, this default mode network shuts down. So we're not going into the future or the past. So it's really easy to understand how that would reduce anxiety, that would reduce depression, that would reduce blood pressure, and even uh, and headaches also and also uh, ADHD symptoms as well. So we're not going into the future, we're not going into the past, we're training ourselves to stay into the present. When I say I'm a full-time meditator, the more that you practice staying in the present moment, the more neuroplasticity your brain will start to cooperate and you can stay in the present. It's just like going to the gym, except build, instead of building physical muscle, you're building brain muscle. Okay, so from beta to alpha, going into the present, focusing on the present, that's where the focus comes in. To go into the hypnagogic state, theta, there's another aspect to it. And I said, notice that in all of those examples that I gave of meditation, you're doing something. To go into the theta, there's a word here, or I can't, I can't highlight it, relaxation. So this is what a hypnotherapy session looks like. The person is not doing anything. The difference is when you go from the beta to the alpha to the theta, you're, the focus is focusing on the hypnotherapist's voice. And to go into the theta, it's relaxation, letting go, surrendering, trusting, you need to do those things to go into the theta brainwave state. So the more that you relax, the more that you let go and you focus and follow the, 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 the voice of the hypnotherapist, then you can go deep into the subconscious. And I just like this picture because it just, you know, there's so much possibility there once you go into the subconscious, which I'll talk about, uh, about what we can do there. But this is an example of the theta. 
just to kind of show that um, that the subconscious is real for anyone out there who's who's questioning. Yeah, but, you know, can the subconscious really? I'm sure some of you out there have been driving. You've been focusing on driving, focusing on the road, relaxing, and then suddenly you've realised your subconscious took over and you don't know what happened for the last five minutes that you were on the road. Okay, so it's a brainwave state. And an important aspect is that when you go into hypnosis, so we're talking about suggestibility, somebody taking control of you, you're always willing to do it. You cannot go into hypnosis. It's impossible for you to go into hypnosis if you don't allow it. It's not possible for someone to control you into hypnosis. And this is important, but it doesn't mean that you can't be manipulated. So I just wanted to, first of all, talk about consumer psychology, because in consumer psychology, they know when they have something like the Super Bowl, that everybody is going to be focusing on a television screen and everybody is going to be relaxed. So you're not only going into meditation, you're going into theta, you're relaxing. And that's why they will spend, I don't know how much, a million on a commercial, on an advert, because they know that that is going directly to your subconscious and you can be influenced by it. But you are still willingly going into theta you are choosing to watch the television, relax and focus on the Super Bowl. So there you see, you, you, we're, we're willing, we're willingly doing it and we're focusing and we're relaxing. So that means that you could say that mass media, the news, television shows, music, video, music videos, all of this, it's all um, can, it can, uh, influences subconsciously, but watching TV is the perfect example. You know, so we're watching TV or we're watching our computer screen. We're relaxing in it. We're focusing, connecting to the subconscious. So it's not, it's not the, the, the hypnosis that's the problem. The problem actually in this situation, say with consumer psychology and people make it a, uh, 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 able, they've, they've studied how to make us buy things that we wouldn't ordinarily want is because um, we willingly do it, but we're not aware, we, we don't know the, 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 the power of hypnosis. All right, so quickly mass formation. Mass formation requires focus on a particular threat. All right, so in the past, it was the Soviet Union, we had terrorism, we had COVID-19, got Russia, climate change, focusing on a threat, all right? Mass, mass formation is not hypnosis, but it uses hypnosis. So it's a technique to control the masses. And Dr. Martez Desmet says you need four conditions for mass formation. One of them is you need to feel alone and isolated. The other is you need to feel meaningless. You don't have any meaning in your life. The other one is you... You need to feel constant anxiety or threat. So that's the hypnosis. That's the focus, feeling the constant anxiety or threat in a relaxed state when you're watching TV, when you're watching the news. Then you start to feel frustrated and angry, and then the authority can pr provide the solution to your problem. So that's why I've always said the most powerful thing that we could do to change the world is, is turn off our televisions. Now, the reason that I put this picture there, I love this picture, by the way, but the reason that I put this picture there is because if we are not focusing on the threat, if we're not focusing on any of those things, then we're not feeling frustrated or angry about that threat. We might feel frustrated or angry with the authorities that are doing this or with the advertising companies or whoever it is, but we're not frustrated or angry because of the threat, which means that we won't be in hypnosis because, or we won't, we won't go yet. We won't be um, manipulated or suggestible in that, in that way because we're not focusing on the threat. So if you are going to watch TV, at least be aware of what that, what's, what's being uh, suggested to you, because if you're aware of it, then you can see through it. 
Okay, so again, the important thing to know is that we're willing to go into hypnosis. It's a choice. Nobody can make us do it. So going back now to uh, hypnosis, hypnotherapy, we know when you are sitting there in the chair and the person is talking to you and guiding you down into this relaxed state, you know that you are being taken down into this relaxed state and you are fully aware, conscious of everything that's being said to you, just like if you're watching TV, you're fully aware, you, you can hear it, you can understand it, nobody can program anything into you in that way. You are in full control because you know what is happening to you. Okay, so the benefits, the first benefit, I just wanted to show some, some evidence, some science, okay. So the first benefit of uh, is a meta-analysis 2016 is that it helps with PTSD symptoms. This is massive because PTSD is a collection of stress over time. And what you can do with hypnotherapy is you can release that stress and you release the symptoms. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Another one is chronic pain. So a 2012 system, a systematic review you can, you can get rid of chronic pain with hypnosis. And this is chronic pain and uh, cancer procedure-related pain in children. All right, depression can also, and I'll explain a little bit how this works, but also depression. Procedural pain is not one that I do. But procedural pain would be when you're actually having an operation at a hospital. And there are, for example, in France, medical doctors can train to do hypnosis for medical procedures as part of their medical training. And then there's a study from 1970, which, you know, it's old, but I, I, I put it in here because a lot of hypnotherapists love to refer to this study. This study showed that you get a 93% recovery rate after six sessions of hypnotherapy compared to 38% recovery from 600 psychoanalysis, 72% from 22 behavior therapy. So people could argue, yeah, but that's, you know, the, these, these therapies have changed now. This is 1970s. But nevertheless, what it does show is the power of hypnotherapy. And this is the, the study from the 1970s. Okay, so this is some of the some of the, the things that uh, I've helped people with personally. So stress, pain, PTSD, depression, arthritis, tinnitus or tinnitus, fibromyalgia, eczema, psoriasis, irritable bowel syndrome, and there's more. Tinnitus, when first session, one session, gone. Arthritis, one session, gone. Um, depression takes time. PTSD usually takes time. Um, fibromyalgia takes time. But psoriasis, I've got a client now and the psoriasis is just slowly disappearing from the body. So how is that possible? Before I go into how that's possible, I just wanted to quickly mention the vaccine injured because I said I would also talk about that in this session. And I also, perhaps there's some people watching this right now from React 19 because uh, I actually reached out to React 19 as well, the American organization for the COVID vaccine injured. And if you are here, welcome. Um, so we know already that uh, hypnotherapy can help with anosmia, which is the loss of taste and smell, and parosmia, which is a sulfuric distorted taste. The fact is, though, is that it's um, it's a vaccine that's never been used before. So we're in, uh, on humans. So we're in uncharted territory. Everybody is. All the doctors are. All the therapists are. We don't know. But what we do know is that hypnotherapy can help with all of this. That it can help with this, and also COVID symptoms, regardless of whether you know. COVID, no COVID, doesn't matter. The symptoms are there. People suffer from fever, fatigue, loss of smell and taste again, um, uh, sore throat. So these all potentially, most of them could also be healed or uh, healed, you shouldn't say healed, helped 
with uh, hypnotherapy, relieved with hypnotherapy. Shortness of breath, potentially also, but um, I'm going to explain now how. So first of all, hypnotherapy benefits everybody. If somebody out there says, I don't need therapy, um, we're, we're missing a point, which is that unless we are free of all of our pain and all of our suffering, all of us could do with uh, taking care of ourselves, doing inner work, getting rid of stress, um, focusing more on the present moment and all of those types of things. So it benefits everybody. And hypnotherapy helps with all conditions caused by stress on your system. So again, going back to the unknown, things like the vaccine injured, any stress on you, uh, any stress that, 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 is, that is being imposed on you um, from something external, we can release that stress. And when we release that stress, it has benefits on all psychosomatic conditions. So psychosomatic conditions are conditions that cannot normally be explained medically, but you have uh, either, for example, emotional, it could be depression, uh, anxiety, something like this, or physical issues, somatic, so physical issues um, that are caused by stress. Then there's also much more that we can do with hypnosis or hypnotherapy, which I'm not going to uh, go into detail about because it goes out of the, well, partly goes out of the realm of current, current scientific uh, studies. But for example, we do know about placebo effect, right? We know the placebo and we know that it's uh, the, a, a thorn in the side of big pharma that they have to produce something that is more beneficial than the placebo effect, which is the power of belief. So we know that the power of belief has the power to heal. And so that is also a part of actually any therapy and not just a psychotherapy, uh, um, uh, hypnotherapy, sorry, but any therapy is if you go in there not believing that it's going to work, you're not going to benefit from it. You have to be open to it. You have to be willing to benefit from the modality. But there's an aspect to um, hypnosis where the power of belief can actually do magic and, and uh, the quantum side of it, the quantum physics, quantum mechanics. So there's an aspect to it, which, which basically what I'm saying is it can move beyond psychosomatic conditions. There's other conditions that potentially could be improved um, through placebo, through the power of belief. And the final thing is when you go into this state, you can get direction, you can discover purpose, you can find meaning in your life. Because you go to a room in hypnosis in the subconscious, you say, okay, open the door. On the other side of that door, you're going to see the memory that you need to see or the image that you need to see, which is going to show you how you can be more aligned on your personal journey. And you will see what you need to see. It's not about the hypnotherapist. You do all of the work and finding the key. <clears throat> so. What I do with freedom hypnosis, um, the first part is uh, release any negative images, feelings, thoughts, emotions, or sensations that are trapped in the body, stored in the body, and not helping you, not serving you. So that's the first part, that release of any internally stored uh, stress. We could talk about energy, freeing the energy. That has massive positive effects. Uh, as I said, on, uh, on a variety of different conditions. But what I also do with the freedom hypnosis is uh, the direction. So helping the, the person to find, um, to either check the direction that they're going on or to find, um, you know, what they need to be doing to be in better alignment on their life journey, as I put it. And, and, the, and the final thing is uh, the key, finding the key. If there's something specific, something that we're really trying to figure out, then we need to find that key. When we turn that key, everything else falls into place. So with freedom hypnosis, I focus on you know, helping people 
who are, let's say, awake and aware of certain things going on in the world. So um, what I'm doing in freedom hypnosis is helping people to find that light, to find the sunshine through the darkness, as you see in that picture there. There's all this stuff going on. How can we go through that stress-free, get rid of the stress, get rid of that backpack of stress? How can we find the right direction? And if there's something more specific, like deep-rooted past trauma, then that's where the key comes in. We go back, we find out exactly where that started, and we can do something with that to, uh, to take that away. All right. So is it the most overlooked uh, healing modality? I would argue, yes, it is. And I also, my motto is that we free ourselves within. So I really believe that freedom comes from within. When we can connect to our subconscious and learn to feel and trust that, it will keep us safe from anything. Our intuition, we could say instead, you can follow your intuition and connect to your intuition. It'll keep us safe from whatever is coming, whatever anyone throws at us. But we have to, we have to learn to go inwards to get the answers, not outwards. And it's unique for every single person. I'll just quickly say then, so if you would like to contact me, anyone that's watching this, then you can send me an email at hello at robitochatwin.com. And this website, robito.info, will just take you to everything that I do. And then going back to the original slide, just telling you a little bit about me. Um, I think I'll stop there. Oh, no. And I also have a thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you so much, Rabita. That was lovely. Thank you. Well, wealth of information. So have we got any questions from you wonderful people? Yeah, Emma, would you like to come off mute? Again, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Thank you so much, Rabito, for sharing your wisdom. And on behalf of PHA, everybody keep up the good work and have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you, Rabito. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much.